Hi, I'm M. Morrison. I'm a trainer with Minds Inc. Minds Inc. teaches mindfulness and wellness skills to students, educators, and parents. Participants in our mindfulness programs learn simple and effective tools that help reduce stress and increase focus, emotional regulation, resilience, and compassion. I'm very grateful that Montgomery County Parks has asked us to make these videos for you. So I wanna share right now a practice for parents, a practice for guardians, a practice for the adults who are charged with regulating the nervous systems of the little beings around you. <laughs> and this practice is mindful walking and gratitude. Let me put this down. What do you think of when you think about mindfulness? For many of us, we may think about someone seated with their eyes closed, maybe doing some sort of meditation. This is one way to practice mindfulness, but it's not the only way. Mindfulness is just paying attention on purpose to what's happening in the present moment. So those birds I can hear outside my window, paying attention to them on purpose with kindness and curiosity is a form of mindfulness. And I've noticed right now for myself that taking walks, especially in some beautiful Montgomery County parks, which is where I live, has been really important to maintaining my emotional well-being. So one practice I want to share is around how we can walk in a way that is more mindful. Often I find when I've been taking walks lately, my mind is still full of thoughts, concerns, worries about the past and the future. It's a little harder for my mind to be in the present. Or sometimes I'm walking the dog and I'm really focused on wishing that she would just get on with her business so I can get back in the house. Not really being super um, just aware of what's happening in the moment, more fixated on what I have to do later, why I have to get back in the house. If you've noticed this happens to you, you might enjoy mindful walking. So with mindful walking, the point is not so much to walk in any particular kind of way. You can walk as slowly or as quickly as you would like. The point is to walk at whatever speed will allow you to really come in and notice what's happening in the present moment. There are a couple ways to do this. One way is mindful walking and a set pace and length. I might pick a space that's about 10 feet wide and I'll go back and forth in these 10 feet. As I walk, I'll try to focus my whole attention and awareness on what's happening right now. The sensations of lifting my foot, placing my foot, and shifting my weight onto my foot. Lift, place, shift. Lift, place, shift. After a few paces, I might go a bit faster. If you have a backyard, maybe you can do it there where no one sees you and thinks you're looking weird. But if you're doing it out in front of a lot of people, you can move at a normal pace. But just noticing, lifting, placing, shifting. Lifting, placing, shifting. Noticing the contact between the feet with the ground. You might also notice that if you're picking a place about 10 feet apart and just pacing back and forth, you're not actually going anywhere. And that's sort of the point, is that so often we walk with a destination. I'm not fully present right here because I'm thinking about where I'm going. So this is a practice of coming back and noticing just the act of walking, which for many of us can be very pleasurable. So picking up pace, place that is 10 paces apart, back and forth, 
and just walking, maybe setting a timer in your pocket for five minutes and just noticing the sensations of your feet on the ground as you go back and forth. I only have a few steps here, but you'll have more when you are outside. So that I'm not really going to any particular destination. I'm just being present with my walking. And as my mind tries to pull me into thoughts about what are we gonna do if this thing in May gets canceled? Or how am I gonna make sure that my partner cleans up after dinner tonight? We can just notice that we're thinking and gently bring our attention back to lifting, placing, shifting of each foot, just noticing over and over. We might widen our attention to notice the sounds that are around us, maybe the sights, the smells, beautiful spring flowers, or if we're doing walking in our homes, noticing some of our favorite things. So we can notice many things in the present moment, those sights, sounds, smells, and yes, notice thoughts and emotions that are really present inside us. We don't have to push away our thoughts or push away our emotions. They're not a distraction from the mindfulness practice. We're just trying to hold all of it of what's here with kindness and openness. So I'm noticing that my heart feels really heavy maybe as I walk. And I notice that I'm really grateful that my ankle has healed from this old injury and I can walk today. Or maybe it's, I'm noticing that my mind is really racing with thoughts about finances. And I also am noticing that I really love the color of that flower right there. So we're just coming back into the present again and again as we walk. We're using our walking as a way to connect us with what's happening right now. Feeling the feet, feeling the body move and maybe also widening the attention to notice different things around us, which in our beautiful Montgomery County parks, there are so many opportunities for this. Another way that I really like of doing mindful movement that I often have heard taught as a mindful walking practice uses the hands. So for some of us, walking is actually not a very accessible practice. I happen to have two legs right now that work right now in order for me to walk. But that's not true for all of us, and that's totally fine. We can still participate in mindful movement. What you might do is from wherever you are, maybe sitting down, taking the hands on the legs, and then lifting, flipping, placing, lifting, flipping, placing using the hands as the sole focus of your attention so that as your mind wanders, you can bring your attention back to the sensations in your hands. It's a mindful walking practice that's more accessible for some of us, especially when we're social distancing. So that's a little bit of a mindful walking practice. You can pick a space about 10 paces apart and go back and forth with no destination. The only object is to really be present as you walk. Or you can use your regular walk that you like to do, walking the dog, walking with kids, walking with a friend, as a way to just try when you notice your mind wandering to come back. You can use the sensation of your body moving through space, maybe touching the ground to move and to focus the mind. Of course, the mind will wander again. That's fine. We're not judging that. It's what the mind does. We just can use the feeling of the body moving, hands or legs, to come back into the present moment. I'm gonna do about a minute of walking practice and I encourage you to do it with me. I'm gonna do it with my hands, but you're more than welcome to walk where you are.
Eyes can be open. The gaze slightly lowered or the eyes can be closed. You may find you need to slow down in order to really stay present and notice. Our bodies are really good at moving into hyper speed. Once they get comfortable with a movement. So if we go twice as slow, sometimes we can feel twice as much. Coming back again and again to notice the feelings of hands, arms, feet or legs moving. Thank you for practicing with me. We'll end our practice today with a gratitude practice. I love gratitude practice as a core part of my mindfulness practice because it really is about being aware of what's really here. So often our minds with their negativity bias can be focused on the negative or focused on that which brings us fear or worry or from the past that which brings us regret or sadness. And those things may be true, and we're often, I will say always, surrounded by things we can be grateful for. So just take a few moments with me right now. You might put a hand on your chest or your low belly. Another really comfortable position that a meditation teacher once taught me was to put one hand around your bicep and the other tucked into the armpit, almost like a self-hug can be a comfortable position for just thinking, bringing to mind 10 things you're grateful for. You may find you want to write them down. One way I like to do it is on my in-breath, notice I'm breathing in, and on my out-breath, I kind of whisper to myself in my mind the thing I'm grateful for. So if I did this out loud, it might sound like breathing in, a fridge full of food. Breathing in. And then when I breathe out, I might say to myself, my dog. Breathing in. And then on my out breath, I would say to myself, the really cool markers that I got to color with. Breathing in. And then breathing out, my roommate. Let's quietly take a few moments. Remember, the gratitudes can be for massive, profound things like our health or our connection to each other or to spirit. And it could also be for you those really small things like seeing my child smile this morning, or noticing that there was one slice left of my favorite bread when I went to make breakfast. Something small. It's important to resource ourselves with these things, to remind ourselves that these two are true amidst all the uncertainty of our ever-changing lives and ever-changing world. These things too are true. So let's take a moment 
You can have your hands resting on your body, or you can have your hands down. You can sit, stand, lie down, eyes open, lids lowered, or lids closed. Breathing in and breathing out, silently noting to yourself something you're grateful for, for 10 breaths. Thank you so much.